Hey guys, in this video I'll be going over navigation for the F5. So the F5 has a couple different things for navigation. It has the kneeboard right here. It has a compass. It has a compass card. It has a ADF radio and a TACAN. Alright, so let's go over the kneeboard first. You open the kneeboard by holding right shift and clicking K on your keyboard. And you can use these arrows down here to scroll through the pages. So you can see these little purple circles here. So if you have any waypoints in the mission editor, they'll show up here as purple circles. And you can also hold right control and click K. And it will drop down a little arrow showing where you are. And you can hold right, sh right shift and click K again to close it. Alright, so next we'll go over the compass. This is just a uh, regular compass here. Uh, and there's a light you can turn on and off. Alright, so next there's the compass card. So that is this one right here. So if you move this heading switch, um, this little guy up here will move uh, to give you an, an idea of where you want to fly. And you can also move this course knob here, which will change this line. The point of this is so like, if you, let's say your runway is 120 degrees, I can set this up here to 120, so I know what direction the runway is. The cool thing about this is you can run it off a gyroscope or magnet. So if you come over here on your right leg, you can see compass. So if you flip it up, it will be in gyroscope mode. The only problem with gyroscope mode is that over time, it can become misaligned. If it becomes misaligned, what you can do is you can put it down to fast slave, and it will realign it, and then you can put it back to gyroscope. Also, if you don't want to run it in gyroscope mode, you can just put it to the middle for magnet mode. In magnet mode, the compass will just always be aligned magnetically, so you don't have to worry about anything. Also, if um, the compass becomes misaligned, or if other instruments become misaligned, let's say you have a power failure, there's a button right here that says fast erect. This will basically reset all your instruments. So what you do is you get your plane into level flight, and then you hit the fast erect button, and you can see it reset my horizon and my compass here, and whenever I let go, it will unlock them. All right, so next we'll go over ADF navigation. So ADF navigation uses the radio here. Basically, you just uh, tune into a radio channel and you put it in ADF mode. And on your compass card, it will show you where to fly. So in order to um, navigate using this radio, basically you need to have something transmitting a frequency. Now the radio here uses megahertz. So unfortunately, you cannot use the NDB stations, which are these little black circles here here, 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 because all these stations are with kilohertz. So you have to put something in the mission editor to transmit a message. So here's how you set it up in the mission editor to transmit a frequency. First, you click this tank button on the left. Then for the category, you do unarmed. And then you just choose a random vehicle. I'll just do this M30. And you click on the map to put it down. Then you come here and you click add. You come here and you click perform command. And then you go to action and you do set frequency. Then you choose the frequency you want. I'll just do 257 megahertz. Make sure it's on AM. The power, I'm not sure if it matters. For me, I've used 10 watts and it seemed to work fine for me. But some people say you should do 100 watts. So I guess you could put 100 just to be safe if you want. Also for the name, make sure you type in something random. I don't know if you need to have a name, but some people have said before that sometimes if you don't put a name and it just doesn't work for some reason. So we have our frequency set, and now we need to transmit something. So you need to click Add, Perform Command, and then here and go to Transmit Message. For the name, once again, just type in something random. Make sure Loop is selected. And then you need to have a file. Unfortunately, in DCS, to transmit a frequency for navigation, you need to have an audio file and it needs to be in a format called .ogg. If you have an audio file that's in mp3 format or something like that, there are a lot of converters online that are called convert mp3 to ogg. You can just do that. But basically what you do is you're going to have to click select and it's going to open um, like a little file explorer and you're going to have to select your audio file which is an ogg in order for this to work. I have already created an OGG file, so I'm going to set it up now. Alright, so once you're in the cockpit, in order to set this up, you put your power switch to ADF, put the frequency mode to manual, type in your frequency, for me it's two, uh, 257, 
And then if you want, you can turn the volume up or just leave it off. If you turn your volume up, you will hear the audio file that you put in. And then this switch here, make sure it's in DF for direction finder. Then on your compass card, you'll see this little triangle. Let me move the heading out of the way. You'll see this triangle up here, which will point to where you need to fly. So it's telling me I need to fly a little bit to my right. And as you can see, the car that I put down just a second ago is a little bit to my right. So it looks like it's working pretty well. Now you might be wondering, why can't I just use this radio to navigate to airfields? After all, airfields do use megahertz frequencies. The problem is that this radio um, direction finding system only works when something is actively transmitting. Airfields are not actively transmitting on ATC unless you're talking to them. So you can't just tune into an AT to an airfield and expect the navigation system to work. It has to be transmitting. If you want to, what you can do is tune into the airfield and then you can contact them on ATC and while you're talking to them, it will temporarily work. So I'll show you how to do that now. So what you do is you find where you want to fly to. I'll just fly to Kobuleti and you click on the airport and you see their frequency, 262. So I'm going to type in 262 and make sure this is an ADF, manual, and direction finder. And I'm going to turn the volume up. So you'll notice it's not working. The arrow's not here. That's because the airfield is not, the ATC at the airfield is not transmitting right now. So what I have to do is I have to kind of trick the system. I have to put it in both and then I'll contact the ATC, so I'll hold right alt and slash on my keyboard, and I'll click ATC, Kobuleti, inbound. Kobuleti, Uzi, one, one, inbound. And whenever you hear them start talking, you need to switch this to ADF. So you can see it's working now. So you can see while the ATC is still transmitting, it's working, but once they stop, it's not going to work anymore. So as you can see, they just stopped transmitting, and now the arrow uh, slaved itself back to the right. So you can use this navigation system to find airfields, but it only works temporarily. Okay, so last thing I'll go over is TACAN. So some airfields in DCS have this little symbol here, this little kind of like this triangle symbol. You can see here it says KVL. If I go to Sanaki here, it says TSK. So this right here is called a TACAN. So each check-in has its own channel, and basically you can type a channel in and use it to find the airfield. So let's say I want to go to Kobuleti. I find Kobuleti's TACAN is channel 67. I come to my TACAN here, and I use this switch to type in the channel 67. Now TACAN has two bands, X and Y. So you can left and right click to change the band. So most airfields use band X, but some use band Y, so you have to double check. So you click on Kobuleti, and you see tech on here, 67X. So I need to make sure it is on X. Then you can turn the volume up if you want, it's just going to play some Morse code. And you need to put it to transmit receive. Then you need to switch this switch here to tech on. And you can see now my um, compass will have an arrow pointing to where the TACAN is. That was the Morse code. If you don't want to listen to it, you can just turn the volume down. TACAN is also useful because it can help you land. So let's say I want to land on this runway here, 07. What I can do is I can use the course knob to adjust it to the runway heading. So it's 07, so I go to 070 up here. And I can use this arrow to tell that the airport is off to my left and behind me. And I can see up here that I'm about three and a half miles away. So what I can do is I need to align myself with the runway. You can see this bar off here is not aligned. So what I need to do is turn into the bar. You can see my plane is turning into the bar now. This bar here is going to slowly line up with this long arrow here. You can see it's moving toward the middle, so I'm going to move toward the left now to line myself up with the line. Now, as you can see, I am pretty much lined up with the runway. However, the compass is saying I'm too much to the right. The reason why is because uh, the runway number here a lot of times is not what the runway exactly is. You can see this is saying uh, 70 degrees, but if I use my compass here, in reality, the runway is 63 degrees. 
So if I set this to 63 degrees, you can see now it's showing me that I'm lined up with it, which I actually am. There's also these little two arrows, the up one and the down arrow. Those arrows show if the TAC end stations behind me or in front of me. I just passed over the airport so you can see now the down arrow is white, showing that the TAC end station is behind me. That was navigation for the F5. Thanks for checking out this video and I'll see you later.